Support Move University in the production of more video tutorials by making a financial contribution or by getting yourself one of these t-shirts. Details under the Support Move section on MoveUniversity.com. The link will be in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. In this video, I kind of wanted to discuss the different types of matter that we can have. So we're going to talk about substances, elements, compounds, and mixtures. So we mentioned before that matter is basically anything that has mass and volume. Anything that has mass and volume. And there are three states, solids, liquids, and gases. Right? Now matter, you can either have pure substances or you can have mixtures. So let's talk about pure substances first. Pure substances have a fixed composition. Their composition is fixed. Okay, so that, that might be intuitive, right? Pure substances, fixed composition, that should kind of make sense, right? Um, within pure substances, we have elements and we have compounds. So we mentioned elements in the previous video. Elements are basically, we said, the simplest type of matter, right? And cannot be broken down further, right? Specifically, elements are made of one type of atom. One type of atom. We'll have videos specifically on the structure of an atom and things like that. Um, Elements can exist as an individual atom or as a diatomic element. Okay, so some atoms, some, some elements, they can just exist. Their elemental form is just one atom of that element. So let's say like magnesium. The elemental form of magnesium is just solid magnesium, Mg, right? Uh, that little, that's a little s there. That's really tiny. Um, or something like carbon. Like carbon is just solid carbon. Just one atom of carbon gives you is, is elemental carbon. But there are some elements that don't exist as just one atom, right? Some you need to have two atoms for it to, for the elemental form. Um, and there are actually seven diatomic elements. There are seven of them, and you should probably commit them to memory. The elemental form of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. They're all diatomic. These are all the elemental forms. When we breathe in oxygen gas, it's not just one atom of oxygen. It's two. The little subscript indicates how many atoms there are of that element. So here we have hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Are all These are the seven diatomic elements. You should probably commit them to memory when you're studying chemistry. It's actually pretty important to keep those in mind. So elements are made up of atoms, and atoms have three subatomic particles, which are protons, positively charged, neutrons, which have no charge, and electrons, which are negatively charged. More on that later. Okay, so now the other type of pure substance is, is uh, compounds, right? So compounds, basically when we have two or more elements in, a, in, in fixed parts by mass, Right, combined in, in a fixed parts by mass, which basically means we're going to have to have whole number ratios of atoms um, uh, to, to make up a compound. Um, another thing about compounds is that the properties of a compound differ from the constituent um, uh, components or elements. Okay, I'll explain what that means in just a second. And the molecular mass of a compound is the sum of the atomic masses. So basically, when you have the atoms of different elements coming together to form something new, but but that will, some some new thing that will have a fixed composition, um, uh, we're we're having different atoms come together, right? We're going to make a compound. So so let me give you some examples. An example might be like water. A lot of people know that water is H two O, right? H two O. Two atoms of hydrogen bound to one atom of of oxygen that gives you water. Now we have a whole number of hydrogen atoms and a whole number of oxygen atoms. We have two hydrogens for every one oxygen that we have. We don't have one hydrogen for half an oxygen atom. We can't have that. We have fixed parts by mass, right? And um, the molecular mass of water is the sum of the atomic masses of hydrogen and, uh, and oxygen here, right? So we have two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. Um, if we add up the atomic masses, we get the molecular mass of water. And another important thing is that the second bullet point, the properties differ from constituent elements, is that water is made up of hydrogen atoms and of oxygen atoms, but water does not have this, it's a fixed, it's a pure substance that has d different properties than the component elements themselves. Like 
hydrogen gas and oxygen gas are not the same as water, right? It's something totally different. Carbon is a solid at room temperature. Um, oxygen is a gas at room temperature. But if you put car one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms together, you can get carbon dioxide, which is a gas that we breathe out, right? That's totally different from elemental carbon or elemental oxygen, right? So these are compounds that have fixed composition, um, and they're made up of two or more elements, right? These are both specifically just two. Uh, something that has more, you can talk about uh, glucose, for instance, which is uh, sugar, C6H12O6, right? Um, the point is that all of these conditions are satisfied. These things are all compounds. Within compounds, there are ionic compounds and covalent compounds. Uh, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because it's not crazy important right now. Uh, ionic compounds are typically solids where you have cations, which are positively charged atoms, um, and anions, which are negatively charged atoms. Um, and what ends up happening is that you have a metal and a nonmetal. And metals will lose electrons to the nonmetals, and nonmetals will gain them. So when the metals lose that negative charge, they become positively charged, they become the cation. And nonmetals, when they gain the electron, they become negatively charged. Right. So an example of this is, uh, is something like table salt, right? Table salt, NaCl, right? Uh, sodium is the metal, chlorine is the nonmetal, and it's actually sodium ends up having a plus charge. Chlorine has a minus charge. Okay. Um, covalent molecular compounds are basically what happens when nonmetals combine. So instead of a metal and a nonmetal, like when it comes to ionic compounds, we have uh, nonmetals combining, um, and instead of electrons being lost or gained, the electrons are simply shared. So we have the sharing of electrons going on. So some covalent uh, or molecular compounds are like the ones drawn up here, uh, water and carbon dioxide. Okay, So that's pure substances. Now what about mixtures? Mixtures are when you have two or more elements or compounds combined in variable proportion. Okay. So we don't have fixed proportions or fixed ratios when it comes to mixtures. right? Uh, and the components of a mixture actually retain their properties. So, so what's going on here? Now, basically, let's just simply, before I get into heterogeneous versus homogeneous, is that the idea of variable proportions is that, let's say I have a cup of water here and a cup of water here. And I put um, a tablespoon, maybe one teaspoon of um, of salt into this one, and then two teaspoons of salt into this one. These are both mixtures of salt and water, right? Um, but the proportions are, are different, right? There's no fixed ratio between this one teaspoon and this one cup, and this two teaspoons and this, and this one cup, right? They're they're different proportions. Okay. Also, when I put a mix uh, a component into the water the water keeps its own properties and the and the salt will keep its own properties right because they're just they're just uh physically combined or they're not chemically combined okay so within mixtures we have heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures so heterogeneous mixtures when, basically when you have visibly separate parts Se oops separate so um, an example that I, I'd like to think of, of, of is like something pretty uh, macroscopic. If we just imagine a bunch of sand in a container and we put marbles in it. Okay, so let's say we have uh, some blue and pink marbles. Maybe we've got some blue marbles up here and then maybe some pink marbles over here. Okay, and then some pink mar marbles down here. And then the rest of the space is filled in with sand. Right, and this is just some some jar or cup or something, some sort of container. Okay, so this this brown stuff that I'm drawing is just sand. So if you look at this, right, you can you can see that there are marbles separate from the sand, right? The the, the parts of the mixture are are visibly separate. Okay. Another thing is that um, the composition uh, differs differs in different regions of the mixture. So what does that mean? It means that that for instance, like there's a high concentration. If I took a little like a square of this portion of the container versus a square of this portion of the container or this area or region of the container, notice here I got more marbles than I would have here. Right here I have like three fourths of a marble. Here I have 
four and a half maybe. So the composition is different in different parts of this mixture. That's heterogeneous, right? That that means basically um, that I have a different sort of concentration of marbles in this area versus this area. It's not uniform throughout. A homogeneous mixture, on the other hand, there are no visible parts, no visibly separate parts, and the comp the composition is uniform throughout the mixture. Going back to the example up here uh, about the water and, and the – actually, let's just draw it down here. If I have two cups of water, two cups of water, um, same amount of water, and in one of them, I put um, I put nothing, and in the other one, I put I put uh, a teaspoon of salt NaCl sodium chloride, right? And then I mix it. You wouldn't really be able to tell which one is which, right? If I put them behind my back, mix them up, you wouldn't 100% be sure which one is which, right? Because when you when when salt when you put salt in water, it dissolves fairly well, right? And the, and the mixture is pretty much as clear as as uh, as pure water. Um, the parts are 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 you not know, visibly separate? And what ends up happening is that it mixes so well that one part of the of the salt water would be just as salty as the um, uh, another part, right? Uh, the mixture would be uniform. So that's kind of the idea behind a homogeneous mixture. Okay. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Now, what we can do is we can take mixtures, right? And these the, mixture mixtures are basically when we put a bunch of pure substances together and shake shake things up, right? Um, what we can do is we can take mixtures and actually separate them out to pure substances via physical changes. Okay, so I'm going to erase this stuff here. Okay. We can change, separate them with physical changes. And some examples are shown here, filtration, extraction, distillation, crystallization, chromatography. Um, like a, a simple example is that if we have uh, a teaspoon of salt uh, in water, what we could do is we could just boil the water. If we heat, heat the water, we could boil the water out. The, wa the water will go from liquid to gas, which is a physical change, and the salt will be left in the container. That's a physical change. We're not changing the identity of the salt or the identity of the water. We're just changing the form or the state of matter specifically of the water from liquid to gas. So these are some examples of physical changes. I might make videos specifically on these at some other time. Now, one thing that's of particular importance, though, is talking about elements and compounds and the interconverting between the two. And that is basically what chemical changes are. Right? And that's where a lot of chemistry, a lot of the chemistry that we're going to talk about is basically right here. We're talking about taking elements and compounds and interconverting compounds. And that's really pretty much, I, mean, I don't want to say pretty much, but a lot of chemistry is studying this particular idea here. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.